Hello and welcome back to the Wrexham Way. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to today's episode where we need to battle for a top six place in the Premier League if we want to have European football. Of course, yesterday we had the EFL Cup, the League Cup final. Didn't quite go to plan. Didn't quite go to plan there. So uh, Aston Villa won it in their 15th in the table, which means they take the European place away from 7th place in the table. So uh, a lot of work to do for us to get a top six place. And you can see from the table, it's uh, it's very, very tight right now. We'll talk more about that later on. What I want to talk about first of all, though, is, of course, what's happened in between episodes. And it's not been... Brilliant, I'll be honest with you. Some uh, annoying results in there. Uh, we beat Leeds United 2-1 and we beat Aston Villa 1-0. Great results for us there. Good six points in those games. Annoyingly though, we drew 2-2 to Southampton in a game where really we should have got the victory in it. Um, a lot more shots, uh, possession pretty even, XG a lot higher. Just a bit of a frustrating one to not get the uh, the third goal in that game to get the win. We then lost 5-1 to Man United. Uh, that was a bit of a frustrating one because they are actually quite far below us in the table, Man United. So that really uh, shook us up a little bit. Uh, Liverpool, who are doing quite well, a 0-0 draw there at home is probably actually a pretty decent result in the grand scheme of things. Until... Don't talk to me about this result. Don't talk to me. <sighs> 20 shots to one shot, 2.66 XG, like it, oh, it irks me. So we are playing well, we are playing well, I think, and uh, with Cardiff, Man City, Burnley and Wolves and Tottenham still to go this season, I am feeling like, you know, we could get that top six finish. The thing is, it's so, so, so tight, as you can see. Uh, Brighton on 56 points, Wrexham on 56 points, Leicester on 56 points, West Ham on 56 points, Liverpool actually on 51. I thought they were a lot higher up on the table than they are. They're not. Makes it even more frustrating that we drew to them nil-nil. I thought it was quite a good result. I thought they were in the top four. They're not. Because Everton, maybe we've got Everton and Liverpool confused there. I don't quite know. But even those teams, uh, Newcastle, Man United, Liverpool, they're not that far behind us. Uh, even Southampton, to an extent, not that far behind us. So we could see ourselves drop down to 12th on the table, I reckon, this season, if we don't start doing things our own way. The only saving grace we have is we have a game in hand on a few teams around us based on the fact uh, that we played in the cup final when other teams played in the league. So we do have games in hand on Brighton and Leicester, uh, not West Ham, sadly. Newcastle have two games in hand on other teams around us. So they've got one game in hand on us. If they win it, there'll be a point behind us. Liverpool, similar sort of thing. If they've got a game in hand, they will only be two points behind us as well if they win that game in hand. So it's all really tight. I don't like it. And I'm not feeling that confident today. Cardiff, maybe I'm feeling confident there. They're on 37 points in 14th. Man City, top of the table, not quite so confident. Although we have beaten both Chelsea and... Well, no, Liverpool were top of the table, weren't they, at one point when we beat them, weren't they? And they've also had a big drop-off since then. But we definitely beat Chelsea recently, who were top of the table at 5-2, if I remember correctly, last episode. So, there we go. My head might drop it off, actually, but uh, currently last place and looking like they are going to get relegated are Tottenham. Only 19 points this season. What we need to do as well is probably look through this team to try and raid them for players to sign when they get relegated. Although it's Tottenham, I doubt they have relegation release fee clauses in their contracts. Anyway, one more thing that I want to talk about before we get into into the game against Cardiff and that is our new striker Frank Nice who has uh, joined the club and done pretty well his finishing has gone up from 10 to 11 a few attributes are going up as well he seems like a good player um, supposedly you know his best position is on the wing I see him more as that false nine and uh, that's where I kind of want to play him uh, quite extensively I think he'd be a great player there and I love playing false nines in this match engine and in FM22 I've had a lot of success with them Thing is, though, he is uh, yet to score a goal and only got two assists in his uh, first 11 appearances for the club. Although his average rating of a 7.09 is not too bad, to be fair. But obviously, the step up from Anderlecht to the Premier League is probably quite big. The other player, though, is Randy Ramheimer. We spoke about him briefly yesterday. But of course, it's the return of the prodigal son. I mean, I think his hair changed quite a bit since uh, we previously saw him in the past. But... Again, more of a left winger supposedly, but again, I see him as a great false nine. Passing needs to be improved a little bit, but I do see him as a great false nine for us. So I think I mentioned it last episode, but I really do think that Randy Ramheimer and Nice can be the false nines, whereas Pepe and uh, where is he injured still, Pereira, is uh, going to be the, for the advanced forwards for the future seasons. But for the next like three, four, five years or so, I see us playing two striker systems because I think we're sorted for strikers for a long time with these boys. 
And so heading into this first game against Cardiff, I think we do need to play the return of the prodigal. And so heading into this first game against Cardiff, we need to play the prodigal son who's returned to the club from Arsenal for a very hefty fee. Uh, I've not seen the comment section yet from yesterday's video because I'm recording this before yesterday's video went out because um, basically from like Friday to Tuesday, I'm away essentially. Um, very, very busy. So videos over the rest of the week might be a little bit... Uh, tight and light, but we'll see what goes on with, with that and how much work it can get done before I go away. But courtesy of injury suspensions and players coming back from injuries, uh, Sousa, Neto and Perea are obviously not playing in this game, which means the lineup is a little bit more makeshift. We've got Mantle in goal, Sumtetic, Felipe, Saliba and Banal in the back line. Uh, Lavia, Paniotov, Batsner and Daniel Patrick in the centre of midfield. Batsner finally back now from his long-term injury that he had out for six months from... Um, what was it? Oh, damaged cruciate ligaments from an impact from a player in training. There were sorts of injuries to get the ones in training, but that was that. And then Pepe and Randy Ramheimer leading the line. That is hopefully going to be enough for us today to get the three points away from home against Cardiff. And given that I don't feel that confident against the Man City game, this is a really crucial three points. So as kickoff is upon us here today, the first highlight of the game is going towards Cardiff, but a good defence there from Saliba. The clearance only as far as Goodmanson. Cardiff with a bit of pressure at the start of this game. Goodmanson can put a ball into Gabadon, who's a player that we have tried to sign in the past. A few Cardiff players actually we've tried to sign. Uh, Gabadon was always far too expensive. Uh, Uranda we nearly signed at the summer transfer window to replace one of our wingers. Ricardo Pepe once again proving that he just can't deal with one-on-one -on -one situations. Despite being our top scorer this season, just cannot deal with the one-on-one -on -one situations. Luis Felipe, oh, he comes off the crossbar there. You hate to see it. Really, really unlucky for him. And Daniel Patrick's header straight at the keeper. So some good chances at both ends of the pitch right now. Oh, Pepe, I thought was going to get in there. Maybe should have had a shout for a penalty in that somewhere, but Pepe not quite getting the ball before it goes back to the keeper. But good effort from him. Hopefully we'll see him score some goals here today. As Daniel Patrick into Randy Ramheimer, into Banal, into Daniel Patrick. And Daniel Patrick, with his 12th of the season from a centre of midfield, puts that one in the back of the net. Maybe a little bit of an unsung hero this season with the amount of goals he has got. But really nice tight passing here in the attacking third in a very central area. I mean, look how close all our players are. But suddenly Bernal finds a bit of space out wide after all the other players drag the defenders right into the middle of the pitch. Bernal has space, finds the pass to Daniel Patrick. And that gives us a crucial lead in this game, in this big battle for a top six place that we've got with so many teams this season. We need to keep winning. Pepe on the ball, plays it back into Suntesic, into Pepe, into Batsner, Batsner back to Lavia, and now into Suntesic. Tessic as Pepe can uh, play quite deep actually. You need to get forward a little bit more. He or the advance forward, mate. Don't play so deep. Although saying that, there are a lot of players in front of him. Lavia finds the ball over the top to Daniel Patrick, who gets his second of the game, and that is crucial. A two goal lead is crucial for us, particularly 21 minutes into this game. But this Battle of Wales is looking pretty good for us right now. We beat them earlier on this season, Cardiff, I believe. If we can do it again, we are conclusively the best team in Wales, I would say. West Ham, I've just seen, are currently drawing to Wolves right now. I uh, need to double check, actually, who's playing at the exact same time as us. I think other games are going on across the weekend at different times. So we need to just double check who's playing right now. But I did see West Ham are drawing, so that's quite handy for us as ooh, Cardiff come very close there. But hopefully for us, that's going to be okay. Also... Batsner puts the ball into the middle. Saliba puts that one in the back of the net. Right, 3-0. This has to be a great... St I, you know what I was going to say. I'm not going to... I'm not going to... I'm not saying anything. I'm not jinxing it. But let's just quickly pause because Wolves are now beating West Ham. That's very good for us. Uh, Everton are beating Southampton. That's good for us. I don't think anyone else around us are playing. I can't see Leicester or Brighton playing, which is quite handy. Oh, is this literally our game in hand? Is this our game in hand that we're playing right now? I didn't even factor that into my consideration or thoughts. This actually is the game in hand I think we're playing right now. So this is huge for us. This is huge for us. We have to win it if it's our game in hand. I guess a few other teams also have game in hand and they're playing right now, but it didn't really make sense to me. Although it is on a Saturday at 3 o'clock, so maybe... Maybe it's not. I can't work. I don't know. Be honest, maybe I should have actually looked at the actual fixture lists uh, a little bit closer to know when our game in hand is. Potentially, it could actually be against Man City. I know they've got a, a game in hand on other teams. They're not playing right now. As Uwanda gets a goal back there for Cardiff, 11th of the season for the man that we nearly signed at the end of the summer transfer window. 
I don't want to see it again. I just want to get to the end of this game as Daniel Patrick looking for a hat-trick. Hoare nearly gets it with that free kick. Uh, gets a corner though, which is really handy for us. We know we're strong from corners as Batsner puts the ball into the middle. Luis Felipe, oh, again, heading that one to the near post. Not quite, not quite getting it in the back of the net. Uh, Batsner once again for this corner cleared away that's probably going to be the end of the highlight that's fine we just need to get to the end of this game unscathed we've got half an hour or so to go in this game a two goal lead is pretty comfortable but we might need to start thinking about maybe protecting it unless we can grab a fourth goal here as Paniotto finds an offside Pepe oh my word that was like a Rabona to chip the keeper there. That's the sort of stuff Pepe can pull off, but he was quite comfortably offside. No need for the replay or anything like that. As uh, Luis Felipe restores the three-goal lead there. You love to see it. Okay, we're in a good position. We're in a very good position. I'd like to think we can't bottle it with half an hour to go, but stranger things have happened. Let's not get too confident. So, with Wolves still beating West Ham, Everton still beating Southampton, that's very handy for us right now. Hopefully it can all stay the same. We've not seen much of Randy Ramheimer today. Hopefully we'll see a bit more of him in the future as he just gets a little bit better. But you can tell the difference in quality between like Randy Ramheimer and Nice. And then, of course, uh, Pereira, who's been playing as a false nine all season, has got double-digit assists and goals, I think, pretty much. 15 minutes to go, and I'll make some changes in a moment's time, I think, to rest some players for the Man City game. But as Sumtesic plays it into Batsner, into Pepe, Pepe loses possession. You hate to see it. I feel bad for Pepe. I feel like on episodes, he comes off as a liability. In between episodes, I mean, apart from recently, like the Liverpool game with 20 shots and stuff like that. You know, okay, maybe he wasn't that brilliant, to be fair, but... I feel like on episodes, he comes across as a big liability, but he is our top scorer for a reason. He knows where the back of a net is. He just doesn't seem to show it on episodes quite so much. He has a chance right now to do it. Ah, I like him a lot. I really like him from what I see in between episodes, but I think you guys in the comments must hate him. You must hate him for the amount of chances that he bottles like that. And to be fair... If he didn't bottle quite so many, he'd easily be on 30 goals this season. But is that a Luis Felipe hat-trick if it's not offside? Let's see what the referee says here. This is a fantastic result, by the way, if this becomes 5-1. I think he might be off. Oh, goal awarded! You love to see it. So is this a Luis Felipe hat-trick? His sixth of the season, he has got... Oh, it's Saliba got the first goal from the corner, didn't he? He's got two goals there, uh, Luis Felipe then. But still, pretty decent return for a centre-back today. A demolition job. A demolition job today. Um, I mean, if only we could have transferred like two of these goals into the games against Southampton and Liverpool. If only football worked like that, we'd be uh, much happier, wouldn't we, I suppose? Much, much happier. But with less than 10 minutes to go, I have forgot to make changes. We'll do it in a second. But there's been plenty to talk about in this game, given the amount of highlights that are going on right now. As Lavia brings the ball over the halfway line into Randy Ramheimer. He plays it off to Daniel Patrick and there's a ball back into Randy Ramheimer who is forced wide, can get the ball back into the five people in the middle there. Batsner though puts it in the back of the net and in his return to the team gets a goal to complement his assists. In fact, this could be a man of the match performance today from uh, Batsner, which would be huge for him because I think it's his first game back for the club. He might have played a little bit. I can't remember if it's his first game back or not, but great for him to be on a 9.1 rating right now. This should be man of the match for him. And to say he's been out for six months, thats it's like he's never left the team. Like, like he's never left the team at all in a 6-1 win. That is something we should be happy about then. Up to fifth in the table with four games to go this season. Four, four games to go this season. Oh, Daniel Patrick got man of the match instead, I think, in the end there. But both on 9.1 ratings. They're pretty decent. As uh, it's, it's a good game for us. That I'm very happy. Uh, we'll scout out some of these players for future transfers potentially as well. But uh, we'll talk about future transfers when it comes to the transfer uh, window and the transfer special. Nick Batsner, did he... I don't think that literally was his first game back. First game back, I thought it was. Um, you love to see it. Excellent performance from him. Six months off from an injury and he comes back and drops to 9.1. Then you start to think who gets dropped in the centre of the field because Paniotov's great, uh, Daniel Patrick's great, our youth intake is not great, uh, a really poor youth intake this season for us. Um, 
the less said about that one, the better, I think. But Seuss is great as well. Like, I think our centre of midfield has gone from being one of the weaker areas like two years ago, to now being arguably our, our strongest area. But we're going to need a big, strong midfield against Man City. Now, we've played two teams this season on camera who have been top of the table at the time, and we've gone on to beat them. Can we make it a hat-trick of results in that regard, as uh, Saliba, Batsner, Patrick and Felipe all picked in Team of the Week, uh, which is fantastic work. Congratulations, boys. Like Daniel Patrick, he's got cons, big matches. doesn't like big matches, and I don't know, I'm not sure... Maybe he faltered a little bit potentially in the um, EFL Cup final, but he's had a fantastic season. He's improved massively. That balance of 20 is absolutely insane as well. And uh, to get 13 league goals, six assists, a 7.29 average rating, it's been absolutely superb from him. Ah, other Premier League games going on right now. So Everton, Liverpool, that's not going to affect us too much unless Everton, uh, Liverpool win that, I suppose. Newcastle, Palace... Ideally, Palace will win that game to stop Newcastle catching up with a little bit. Uh, a win for Liverpool, not the most ideal. They've got a game in hand. Uh, if they win it, they will go two points behind us. Newcastle draw, though. So they are three points behind us with the same amount of games played, but better goal difference. Sounds very familiar to last season. But Brighton are also still three points behind us. Leicester three points behind. In fact, yeah, this has worked out perfectly. Worked out absolutely perfectly this. We're now three points clear. Four games to go. It's in our hands. It's in our hands. Okay, so looks like everyone is playing right now on uh, the... Okay, so back to the Man City game then. Looks like everyone's playing right now. So we need to look out for uh, Newcastle, Brighton, Leicester, West Ham, Liverpool. Quite, quite a lot of teams. Uh, Leicester are playing Everton. Hopefully Everton win that. Uh, Villa are playing Liverpool. Southampton, Man United. Uh, Newcastle, Wolves. Uh, who else? There's so many teams to look out for. Brighton, Palace. We'll work it out as we go along. It's probably just better to look at the table as things go rather than look out for individual results. We're looking for like half the games here at this point, aren't we? In this game then, what do we want to change? Well... I might swap Ramheimer for Nice. He looked a bit invisible last game, uh, Ramheimer. So I think Nice will come on. You know what? I feel like I'm very happy with the team that just played. I mean, how bad's Neto's injury? Still suspended, sorry, Neto. So out for the next game as well. But Bernal made a good game there, had a, a good assist as well. You know what? I mean, Suta can come onto the bench. But... You know, given how well they played last game, I don't really feel the need to make too many changes, if I'm honest with you. So just the one change up top, uh, I'm sure Randy Ramheimer will get himself going next season as well. But obviously it's a big change for two young players to come in to try and fit into our system. But Man City, it's a difficult challenge this one. They are seven points clear of Arsenal as it stands right now. Uh, Arsenal playing Tottenham right now, who have jumped themselves up actually, uh, must have been with a win at some point, uh, into 19th place. So the fight for survival is on for Tottenham, but I think they probably are going to be going down, which is exciting, as the ball to Pepe is not the best in the world. And now Man City can look to try and build it out from the back with Musiala into their right back, who's overlapped, but over kicks it into some Tessic's path. He plays the ball back to Mansell, back into some Tessic, and some Tessic now can bring it over the halfway line, under pressure into Paniotov, back to some Tessic. If we start to bring it a bit more into the centre of the pitch, where we have the bodies, where we have the players to make all those passes, but the ball over the top is not great but we do win it instead. Now, Erling Haaland's got like 37 goals this season. He's clearly the danger man. He's the man who's going to score goals today. Oh, he, Pepe. He's camera shy. He really is camera shy. I swear he's not this bad off camera. Uh, although in recent weeks, I guess kind of has been, like I said, some of those games we've had like loads of shots and no goals has been frustrating. But like, if we had a player of Haaland's quality in the team, like he would never miss those opportunities. And potentially like Perea wouldn't miss those opportunities. Maybe we try Bernal up front because that is what you call a rocket into the top corner. Beating Edison, we're one nil up. Okay, this is good. Some Tetic was thrown in. I didn't really see the build to the goal, to be fair. It's like a nothing cross, isn't it? But one touch Bernal, two touch shot in the back of the net. Like, superb. Okay, okay, right. Um, 
Still, there's only 20 minutes on the clock, right? There's still a long way to go in this game. We can't get too excited as Dwight McNeil gets the ball in the area. Passing out wide with uh, Theo into Musiala, who just puts it in the back of the net. That's frustrating because I swear he's only like five foot two. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Um, look, it's we're drawing again. We're not behind in the game. It, it's good. Let's just try and keep positive vibes going as Batsner finds Frank Nice into Daniel Patrick, into Banal. Banal now can put a ball into Daniel Patrick. He puts it across to Nick Batsner. Second game back, second goal. Like he's never been missing. How do we pick a midfield three when they're all absolutely insane, the four of them? I'm very happy with our midfield. I mean, Kamara, when he's played as well this season, has been really solid. He's got quite a few goal contributions too. Like, I'm really happy with our centre midfield. I'm happy with our strikers if Pepe could actually, you know, finish some more opportunities. That would be great. It makes me think, like, for next season, maybe it's a defence we need to improve. We could probably do with better fullbacks. Centre backs, I think I'm happy with Saliba and with um, Felipe for now. But we'll see what the budget looks like. Mantle, been quite happy with him. So I think wing backs are maybe what we need to look to improve next season. Um, and obviously, we can look around and just see who's available and who's good. And if there's a great world class midfielder available, of course, we bring them in, sort of thing. So it just kind of depends on how it all works. As Frank Nice finally gets his first goal for the club in his 12th start for the club or 12th appearance for the club finally gets his first goal but that is a spectacular goal for the Belgian wonder kid signed for uh, 25 million pounds or so from Anderlecht a big outlay for a 20 year old striker who's a little bit unproven and has quite low finishing but that was a good a finish as you'll see okay so if we can just you know see the game out a bit oh what we're in the top four what are Chelsea doing? Chelsea are 1-0 down to Leeds. All of a sudden, this isn't a battle for top six. If Chelsea lose and we win today, we're in a battle for Champions League football as Frank Nice grabs a second... Oh, my word. 4-1? Why do I only remember three goals? Nice has got two. Bernal got one. What? Well, oh, Batsner got his goal, didn't he? How can I forget Batsner's goal? So, look at this as well, by the way. Five shots, four goals. Man City must be fuming today, but we've had some great before. Why could we not do this off camera, by the way? I mean, suddenly we've gone from like not being able to score goals off camera. You saw the chip, the Liverpool like match stats. It was not great. To now, the point where we've scored ten goals in today's episode, or is it nine? I, I really can't remember the score lines. I'll be honest, it's been a very busy day. It's been a very busy day for me. Um, I'm also coming up to the point where, like, my car, its PCP deal is coming up for renewal, or not renewal, it's finishing. So I need to get a new one. Um, so I've been looking at cars all day today as well. So I've got all sorts of numbers buzzing around in my head. So if anyone works at a car place and can get me a really, really good deal, uh, I'm all ears. I'm all ears. Just as I'm all ears for Luis Felipe grabbing his third goal of the episode. I don't... We put five past Chelsea when they were top of the table. We're just putting five now past Man City when they're top of the table. I can't believe this. What an episode today. This is mad. And despite all of this, poor old Ricardo Pepe just can't score goals, can he? He can't score goals. Uh, what we'll do is bring Randy Ramheimer on for Pepe, I think. We'll make that change. Uh, Santetic having a poor game. Let's bring... Spadina on that left hand side and then through the middle Patrick on a yellow card will bring Sousa on to actually get a bit of game time Ostergaard as well of course is a a bit of a forgotten player nowadays actually he could see himself being moved on in summer potentially if there's a good option for a slightly more defensively minded midfielder he'd maybe be the backup CDM so a backup CDM to Lavia could be quite good as Haaland gets his token goal of the game 48th of the season in all competitions 38 in the league now I think but 48 in all competitions he's been incredibly quiet today that's the first I think I've seen of Erling Haaland we've nullified him quite well but with only moments left in this game things are looking pretty good for us unless of course Haaland scores again which he might not, which is quite good. Let's get this highlight done and dusted, shall we? Please, if you'd be so kind, lads. Haaland's well offside. He's going to score, isn't he? But he's well offside, like a mile offside. I mean, look at that. There's no question there. No question. And so with that, we win the game 5-2 against Man City. And it looks like, it looks like Chelsea just lost their game too. 
So all of a sudden we've gone from a, a top six fight to a top four fight. What an episode. Okay, well, tomorrow we're going to be back. Uh, tomorrow we are back with the final three games of the season. We have got Burnley 19th, Wolves 17th, Tottenham 20th. Oh, my gosh. I didn't realise they were all down the bottom end of the table. This is the perfect opportunity. We could have Champions League football tomorrow. Watch us bottle it against teams who are getting relegated. I can't believe it. Uh, thank you very much for watching today's episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Join tomorrow for what could be a very, very exciting episode. And uh, yeah, have a good one. Goodbye.